Hi everybody, it's Doc Talk. Uh, we made it to May. It's beautiful. This week I've been traveling and I've been through all four seasons uh, in, in the course of four or five days. Uh, Seattle was having rain and a significant blizzard up in the pass areas over the top of Seattle with feet of snow coming down. Uh, across the high plains in the west, uh, it was it was very significantly snowing, and um, and so we still have winter uh, here at the end of April, beginning of May, uh, and then in other parts of the country it's really hot. I'm in Ohio today, and it's very warm, and everything is blooming. So that's going to lead us to one of the topics we'll cover uh, this week. Two really important things uh, first. Number one, uh, we have had a number of issues about H5N1. H5N1 is uh, one of the influenza A viruses that has a very bad history of causing illness and pandemics um, in prior generations across the globe. So the, the, the watchdogs are always watching for H5N1 to appear. They have found spotty cases in the United States in cattle and in birds. And the concern was, in one case, it turned into a human case. There have been concerns about H5N1 passing into milk and into meats. And let's just say influenza viruses are respiratory viruses. Um, and the concern of a respiratory virus is it going into your upper respiratory system, not into your GI tract. And so anything that you have heard at this point related to ingestion of a flu, uh, influenza A, H5N1, uh, at this point, that's not a concern. It's not a public health concern. Anytime H5N1 appears on the planet, people get very concerned and they make every attempt as they should uh, to try to stop that outbreak. Outbreak two that's a, that has occurred very quickly is our uh, little critters, particularly bees, have started into season. Um, those produce life-threatening uh, allergic reactions. I've seen my first couple already, and the, the public health reminder uh, around that topic is um, severe allergic reactions are treated with one medicine, that is epinephrine or adrenaline. Uh, epinephrine needs to be administered in a shot uh, into, the, into the muscle. Uh, so for all our uh, EMS and fire providers, we know about giving epinephrine. For people who have allergies of any kind, uh, they keep epinephrine in a special pen called an EpiPen that if you trigger it by, by pushing it hard against the skin, it shoots out a needle with a life-saving amount of epinephrine in it and saves a person's life. Benadryl is not a life-saving medicine for allergic reactions. Steroids are not a life-saving medicine for allergic reactions only epinephrine is. So if allergic reactions happen to people, peanuts, shrimp, um, medicines like penicillin or a bee sting, uh, those should result in an immediate call for 911 help. If you have an EpiPen available, you administer the EpiPen in the upper arm or in the thigh, and you get that medicine on board quickly. It is the treatment for acute major allergic reactions. Benadryl is good for rashes, allergic rashes. Uh, and oftentimes people who get hives related to certain exposures. So they have a very, they have a history of very minor reactions to certain foods and they get a rash. Benadryl is fine. They don't have to move to adrenaline or epinephrine. Uh, we, can, we can treat them with Benadryl. So those are the two very, very important pieces uh, that I had to had to uh, very quickly talk about uh, this month. The third uh, is one that really seems to have sprung out in the population, which is seasonal allergies. So this mixture of seasons, sudden blooms um, here in Ohio right now, all of the flowers and trees have bloomed. And a lot of people are running around with really runny eyes and a runny nose. They, they're congested in their throat, they're coughing and sneezing, and they feel miserable. What do you do about that? Well, uh, at this point, uh, some of our pharmacists told me today uh, they're almost out of Benadryl and some of the, over, the other over-the-counter antihistamines. 
and antihistamines um, reduce the amount of histamine produced by whatever you're allergic to. Uh, and so they're effective. Uh, we also have eye antihistamines um, that are in the generic section now of your pharmacy. They don't require a prescription. None of these over-the-counter um, uh, antihistamines require a prescription. So you can get Benadryl um, in whatever you need. The appropriate dose for an adult is 25 milligrams. It's proportionately lower for children in a liquid form. Uh, others, uh, Zyrtec and other over-the-counter milder antihistamines um, are also dosed appropriate for age. Uh, and then eye drops uh, that have uh, diphenhydramine or Benadryl in them are very effective for people who have really uh, runny eyes. For those that have more severe reactions, um, it's time to talk to your physician and talk about getting on prednisone uh, or another form of a steroid, which can be in the form of a shot that lasts for a longer period of time. And there are some people who are just miserable this time of the year. It's, if you will, kind of predictable uh, that they will have problems and they can talk to their doctor about the appropriate ways to get, to get relief. Start with oral antihistamines, uh, antihistamines in the eye. And the next potential is either an injection of, or most people do fine with just oral steroids. And the most common is prednisone. Those are also available in pediatric dosing in liquid form. Uh, so that if your child is miserable, that's a really good thing to talk to your, to your primary physician about. That is really the, the maximum treatment that we have uh, for seasonal allergies. Uh, and there are people, including people that I work with, uh, that just can't make it through a couple of weeks, maybe in the spring, maybe in the fall, and unfortunately a couple of people, it's both. Um, and they need a little burst of steroids uh, maybe a week's worth to get through. You can't use steroids long-term or it results in problems in your adrenal glands and you have to be very careful about that. And anyone with immune problems really has to talk to their doctor uh, about short courses of steroids because uh, those can really affect uh, the way that their body reacts to infections. So we have a really good time coming here with springtime. Our infectious diseases are down a lot kind of this end of the year, uh, little, uh, little influenza B uh, uh, that we've had for the last couple of uh, months um, is beginning to resolve also. Uh, pay attention uh, to the weather. And this time of the year is when we get into heat issues, when it gets hot very, very quickly, outdoor activity, firefighting, uh, EMS, uh, police department work uh, can become very, very, very uh, burdensome on the people that have to do it because they haven't acclimated yet. So it's it's May. I'm really glad we're at this time of the year and talking about these kind of topics. Have a good, healthy couple of weeks. We're going to talk before Memorial Day. It's Doc Talk. Happy May. <laughs>